Hello and welcome back. Um, we are doing a weekly review of all the Nets games involved. I'm just reading off some notes, um, so please excuse me if I don't elaborate on what I'm saying. Um, but let's dive right into it. First and foremost, we have got Nets OKC. That was the first game um, that I missed. It was a 10 point loss um, and basically everything went wrong in this game. Um, turnovers, turnovers were a big, big issue in this game. Um, Joe Harris had some great looks, especially late in the game, which he basically threw away. Um, Kyrie was awful in this game. Um, and for statistics, um, Kyrie was 16 of 44 in the two games from Boston to OKC. So um, he wasn't great um, up until today, which was the Utah game. But um, in those two games specifically, he, he wasn't great. Um, Seth Curry was awesome um, in that game. He's been a bit on and off, a bit inconsistent, but um, he was good in this game. And Nick Claxton, who is probably our most consistent performer um, in the KD injury era, um, you know, he was, he was pretty switched on in this one as well. Another big issue was rebounding. Um, that also you will notice is a very common trend amongst these games. Um, and on top of that, you know, there were quite a few parallels between um, how we ended the game against Boston um, and how we ended the game against OKC in terms of not playing a complete full quarter performance. Then we move forward to the Nets and the Spurs. This one also ended in a loss, an eight point loss. Um, and we're gonna do it in a little bit of a quarter by quarter analysis. Um, this is sort of the way I did it. But the first quarter we got out to a really large deficit or the Spurs got out to a really large lead. We only scored 15 points in the quarter and you were wondering where was Cam Thomas? Um, this was the game we didn't have Kyrie. So um, it was a very puzzling decision to not have him in the game. We only had one assist in the entire quarter. And Ben Simmons, I mean, there's been a few occasions where he, you know, we have pace, we're bringing the ball forward very quickly, getting into an early offense, and Ben holds up his run right as he's about to go drive towards the rim. And it just basically stunts the entire offensive set. So obviously, um, you know, he's still not 100%, and, and the longer he does that, um, the more he's hindering, you know, the ceiling for this Nets offense. And I remember this game, we could not make a three for our life. Um, and in the second quarter where we sort of, you know, fought back well, it was purely off of driving towards the basket. And Edmund Sumner, who came into the game and had an impact, TJ Warren, who, you know, came into the game and had an impact, they were at the forefront of this, of this comeback. And Cam Thomas also appeared and, and was able to, you know, score a couple buckets um, when required. Um, and that really allowed the scoreboard to keep ticking over. And especially given we had only had one assist in the first quarter, I mean, we were playing iso ball, and you know Cam Thomas, he loves the rock in his hands, so if there was a game any more suitable for him to play, it was this. In the third quarter, I mean, the state of the game was really encapsulated by the fact that with about seven minutes to go in the third quarter, there were 25 turnovers between both sides, so it wasn't clean by any stretch. Um, Joe Harris in this game was incapable of absolutely everything. He couldn't make shots. He couldn't defend, he couldn't box out, um, and boxing out was a really big issue. That bridged into the fourth quarter where um, Jakob Podol was an incredibly difficult force to contain. Um, they were getting a lot of second chance opportunities through him. And there was a ridiculous block by Nick Claxton. He met Calden Johnson at the summit, um, and then we broke out in transition in the fourth quarter. But unfortunately, um, Ben Simmons once again fell into that, you know, that habit of holding up the play in transition and what did it do it hindered us hindered us significantly and and Calden Johnson goes the other way after we stuff up the offensive um, advance and and he throws it down so that was a real turning point in the game overall the game ended in a loss we had over 20 turnovers we had only three threes in the entire game we were one of 16 at one point um, and you're never going to win a game of basketball like that so as much as the Spurs didn't play great, we somehow managed to play even worse. And especially in a game like this where, you know, we didn't have Kyrie, we didn't have KD, there was a lot more burden on other players um, to, you know, sort of facilitate and, and there's obviously more difficulty to make space because Kyrie and KD don't have that same gravitational pull in terms of, you know, the attention they attract. And to, you know, continue on with this Ben Simmons slander, he had a dunk in this game, which he just blew. He absolutely threw a Spurs defender to the side, which was awesome. 
um, but then was, wasn't able to, you know, finish off the play by, you know, being a little bit too over-eager on the dunk attempt. I don't think he'd ever seen that, that much space in, in two or three years. And look, we talk about, you know, players not being able to make space and whatnot. Um, there's a statistic that on the 20th of January, we had the worst, the worst uh, half-court offense in the entire league with KD out in those, you know, three games uh, leading up to the Spurs game and through the Spurs game. And then we move forward to the Suns game. Um, and this one, well, Kyrie Irving started, you know, very poorly in this one as well. You know, the struggles had continued across um, from the OKC and the Boston games. Um, there was a really weird defensive scheme where we tried to switch everything. I mean, we've obviously d done that all year round, but without KD, um, you probably don't have as much luxury to do that because you're so much more undersized with KD not being able to play. We actually did well to get to the free throw line in this game, which is a really uncommon trend um, for this team, which was good to see. And Ben Simmons looked really aggressive in this game, a complete contrast from the games prior. Um, you know, some of the dunk attempts were pretty vicious. I mean, Ben Simmons and dunk attempt in the same sentence is, is unheard of. But yeah, we go back to the switching defensive scheme and that clearly wasn't working because DeAndre Ayton, by the end of the first quarter, had 10 and seven. Uh, meanwhile, Kyrie, who really needed to step up, was only one of six. And overall, we just seemed very pedestrian in this game. There was a couple times where, you know, it was a five on four in, in our favor, um, but a Suns player could just, you know, from trailing behind, could just receive it on the catch and, and shoot a three and knock it down because we simply were half asleep and didn't realize that there was a player um, coming up to the half court offense. The Suns were dominating rebounds. They had six more shots by the end of the first period. In the second quarter, there was pretty much more of the same. Um, in terms of, you know, defensive shot contesting, we looked very half -arsed. Um, A lot of wide open threes. Kyrie Irving was, you know, incredibly inconsistent with his shot as well. Not very aggressive. Saban Lee was putting him to shame. Um, I think, well, according to this, nine points for Saban Lee in the first half and Kyrie had four on two of 10 shooting. So. Saban Lee was being really efficient and, and driving to the basket and being more assertive in that regard and using his pace. Meanwhile, you know, Kyrie was pulling up for three-pointers and mid-range jump shots, which clearly weren't working at the time. And Kyrie was really playing into the Suns' hands, you know, it was making it very easy for them to cover exactly what he was doing. As a result, the offense was really suffering, not only, you know, from scoring no points, but also um, from the shot quality, because we had either open players in the corners um, and, you know, we obviously weren't utilizing that at all. An interesting thing that happened in this game, Joe Harris was the leading scorer at halftime, I know. Interesting's that, but Joe had played the least minutes of any player um, in the starting lineup, which didn't make much sense um, because obviously, obviously we were lacking scoring at the time and Joe wasn't getting really any credit for what he was doing in the first half. Hadn't missed the shot, didn't miss the shot the whole game. In the third quarter was really stop and start. We had eight fouls in half the third quarter, which was really telling a, a telling a tale about what was actually going on in this game. Ben Simmons got ejected in the third quarter. It was incredibly soft. Um, I had a few words to say, but um, overall, the free throw number, we had 11 in the first quarter. Um, that ledger swung the other way, and the Suns had nine more at three-quarter time. Um, 29 to 20 in that regard. 22 points to zero second chance points for them as well. Um, that was really proving to be a huge difference maker on top of the fact they had also 25 more rebounds um, at the end of the third quarter. So yeah, and on top of that, Kyrie Irving with only nine points on three of 16 shooting. I mean, with your best player playing like that, it's gonna be incredibly difficult for you to pull out a good result. But there was something that seemed to work in the third quarter for a brief patch, and that was the 3-2 zone. Um, we opted for it a little bit, and when it worked and we got stops, we were able to play with a little bit of pace and, and knock down some shots um, in rhythm, and that really translated over to the last quarter. And then in the last quarter, well, Kyrie had 21 points. The offense looked absolutely free. Um, you know, it seemed like we had been handcuffed for the first three quarters, and in the last quarter, we were playing with pace at every single opportunity. Um, and, you know, the zone was working an absolute treat. You know, we were able to close out the shooters on the perimeter and also equally converge on any players that were trying to get a shot up in the paint. And that really allowed us to, you know, 
have a really effective defensive scheme that was allowing us to get back into this game. Ultimately, we left our run too late. Um, there was a three turnover sequence, um, three consecutive possessions where we turned the ball over on that late game run. Um, and also, you know, there were a couple times where we, for some reason, went back to, you know, the old habits of switching and Nick Claxton, who had been playing an ex excellent job on DeAndre Ayton in the second half. Well, he didn't end up on him on those couple of possessions, and that's where the game was ultimately lost. Clax shot a three in clutch time. I have no idea why he did that. Um, had me absolutely confused. Um, but you know what? I mean, at least he's taking more three-pointers than Ben Simmons. Um, overall, we didn't deserve to win that game, but you know, I have to give credit um, to us for showing fight and resilience, especially with basically the same five playing the entire final 12 minutes of the game, um, especially on the first night of a back-to-back. -back. You knew you had a game the night after and we were trying to chase this one and, and credit to them for, you know, basically putting in all the effort in the last quarter. But unfortunately, you know, if you're not gonna play four quarters, um, you don't really deserve to win most of the time. And going into this game um, today against the Jazz, we were over four um, without KD, 30th in offensive rating, 26th in field goal percentage, 28th in three point percentage, 28th in free throw percentage. And you get the gist. It's an absolute shambles without KD on the offensive side of the ball. On the upside, I alluded to Nick Claxton being the most consistent without KD in the team. He is averaging, or was averaging until today, 15 or so points, 11 boards, and three and a half blocks, averaging, or well, shooting, 68 and a half percent overall and 47% from the line. So the free throw shooting is always gonna be a problem with him, but overall, good work. And to commence this last game, well, to be honest, we actually had a pretty good start. We were attacking the rim, um, basically carrying over that good form from yesterday or the way we ended that game. Um, and you know, Kyrie Irving was really leading um, the charge in that regard. However, the bench came in and we lost that offensive spark. And um, the Jazz, while well, they were getting to the line at will, um, we did hold Markinen down well um, until the second half, but in the first half, he only had eight points total. Um, so we did a really good job of, you know, basically cutting him off at the source um, in terms of offense. Second quarter, the intensity was not brought defensively. Um, there were a lot of easy drives to the rim um, and there were numerous reasons for that, but the main two were a lack of communication, number one, um, and you know, poor switching as a result of that. Jazz had a 17-4 advantage um, in terms of free throws, which wasn't ideal, of course, um, especially in a game where you were sort of holding them down well um, when it came to their kind of offense. But overall, there were a lot of soft fouls in there as well. And um, you know, the referees don't like us, we know that. Kyrie at 20 and a half, um, we start the third quarter with Kyrie. There was some random ass foul on Walker Kessler. Um, it was an over the back foul or a loose ball foul. Um, and Kyrie barely gave him a nudge. And I thought the game was over right there. I thought the minute that happened, I thought, you know, it was our destiny. We weren't gonna win this game. Third quarter though was actually a really good quarter. We were running with pace. Kyrie, when he grabs a rebound, he was running with it all in one motion. And that was really kickstarting the offense nice and early and not allowing the Jazz to settle one bit whatsoever. And the 3-2 zone, once again, we went to that um, as a way to sort of stop what the Jazz were doing, you know, in that second quarter where things were much, much easier. Um, the only pitfall from that, um, once again, the rebounding was somewhat of a problem, not as much as our previous games, but in saying that, um, you know, those plays in the corners, they sort of like tread along the baseline. Um, and, you know, when someone misses a shot, um, it's very easy to lose track of your players whilst you're in the 3-2 zone. So a couple of times we were sort of caught out in that regard and gave away a few offensive rebounds there. But overall, it was a pretty, you know, cohesive system. And defensively, overall, we were excellent in that quarter. Active hands, as a result, we were able to, you know, yeah, run in transition and there were plenty of shots on offer. And finally, we have gotten to the last quarter of the last game this week. Um, and look, in the fourth quarter, I mean, it was... A pretty tough grind. Um, there were a lot of free throws in that as well, but Royce played a really good job on Jordan Clarkson. In the last quarter, it was very clear they were trying to play, you know, pretty much through him um, on the offensive side, and Royce did a really good job of gluing to him um, in that last quarter when they were, yeah, forcing it. 
there were a couple moments late where it got a little bit, you know, a little bit iffy um, because we were taking some really irrational shots and we needed to call for some, you know, some calm moments, just a bit of composure. And ultimately, Kyrie Irving, I mean, he was unbelievable in this game. He ended with 48, 11 and 6. He had four steals, he had 21 in the last quarter, um, and he was basically everything we needed. Everything we'd been calling for in, in the days prior, the games prior, um, where he hadn't been delivering, he made up for it in this game where he exceptionally led the team. Clax was also really underrated in this one. There was a crazy ass block where he basically switched hands midair and adjusted um, to the way that, I think it was Colin Sexton had contorted his body, but um, Clax has just been an excellent player. And offensively, he's actually um, scored 20 in two straight games. So that, you know, could potentially be flagging some more improvement on the offensive side. I think it's also very, very easy to, you know, sweep over the fact that Seth Curry brought some very high quality late game minutes, um, especially when Kyrie went to the bench for a couple of minutes for a breather. Seth Curry was sort of, you know, handling the offense and, and scored some timely buckets along with the dagger at the end of the game. Overall, it was a colossal effort by the, uh, you know, the team that closed the game. They once again nearly played the entire last quarter. I think it was Ben Simmons in, Joe Harris out. Obviously, Ben wasn't there for the end last night. Um, but, you know, it was a Herculean effort, I guess you have to say, in the last quarter. You know, obviously, second night of a back-to-back, -back, you're absolutely cooked, you know, from basically, you know, bringing the heat right to the end the night before. Um, and they never really, um, you know, sat back down and, you know, let the Jazz trampled them. And I just want to go back to Kyrie as well. Um, you know, he did a great job late in the game when the attention was at its highest in terms of picking Kyrie up. He was getting blitzed on basically every single possession. He couldn't shoot those heat checks any further. Um, he did a great job of finding the open man. And, um, you know, in some games, he would probably just be like, I'm the clear number one in the court. I'm going to take the final shot. But he did an exceptional job of you know, finding the the open man and, and making the sensible team play. Ultimately, we look ahead. Um, we've got Golden State and Philly next. Two big games. We obviously do not have KD for those, um, but obviously it's going to be another opportunity for some role players to step up. Um, we had Royce step up today. We had Joe yesterday. Um, we're going to need some more efforts from some other players. You know, players need to be responsible with their, you know, discipline on defense and it's and it's going to have to be a well-rounded team effort where, you know, we're contributing both offensively and defensively. We're seeing what the defensive impact does on the offensive side and we're seeing what the offense does in terms of releasing the burden on, on certain players um, to get the job done every single night. So ultimately, what a colossal video. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. It probably wasn't worth um, 25 minutes of talking, but um, there you have it. So I hope you enjoyed this one. Um, make sure to share your thoughts and um, we'll see you soon. Have a good one.